One day, within the month of May, a man had walked next to a river. For why he did so, why he had took those steps, such knowledge now forgotten by even the mountains. Yet did that matter, a time which was not here today, the man thought later and walked the same routinely way. For all he could remember, his life and lives before all chose to stay. Whatever reason, that was not something anyone could say. Step after step, the grass kept crumpling beneath his boots. Pace after pace, the wind blew forward, revealing its roots. Look after look, the man took notice of something so benign. Thought after thought, the man had realized that that blade will never shine. For such a thing so small, so puny and so insignificantly tall, to give it such attention, to treat it as anything at all, would be to think forever, to see yourself as in a fall. Yet that is what the man did, each day he chose to walk this way. But were it easy, then the man would not have fright. Not every day the weather was so kind to shine a light. Sometimes the wind would come to show his endless might, and other times the ground of white would never leave his sight. Despite his struggles, the man had never stopped to think, both as he walked and as his thoughts could disappear within a blink. The wind was strong, but also sometimes helpful. The ground was white and also often beautiful. Infrequent thunders raised the hairs of those who heard them. They never stopped to show the insignificance of men. The blazing heat that seemed to make him swim in poison, it was the crucial product of the life-creating sun. The always working bees and bugs who grew each plant, the sun and moon that symbolized the yin and yang, the deer or squirrel that never heard of his apology, the timid passerbys who write their own lifelong story. But even then the world was never one to still, a lonely feather meant to tell of someone's will, a dirty coin whose symbol never managed to fulfill, a pretty sky with so much hope left to instill. And after that there's still the matters of the mind, that person long ago that always seemed so kind, a choice he made that was no worryingly blind, the meaning of his life that he still tries to find. Yet in the end, the man was lonely, sad, and tired. Not for his life or dreams, but what was now retired. As after years of walking, the forest was acquired. But not by him, nor who he had desired. Each step now molded in the remnants of a new decay. The glory trees had crumbled and destroyed the way. And while he walked and walked and brushed the thoughts away, the man was old and tired and had his sights on his final day. Many years later, the son had come to walk the path. He pondered why his father loved this place of wrath. The son then looked around as he approached the river. Maybe he'll come again and see more beauty, if only another sliver.